Good morning. It's Thursday, January 26, 2023. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, The Big Book of Do's and Don'ts by the Dozens. And our scriptures, 1 Peter chapter 3, where the big fisherman writes, Finally, all of you should be of one mind, sympathize with each other, love each other as brothers and sisters, be tender-hearted and keep a humble attitude. Don't repay evil for evil. Don't retaliate with insults when people insult you. Instead, pay them back with a blessing. That is what God has called you to do, and he will grant you his blessing. For the scriptures say, if you want to enjoy life and see many happy days, keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn away from evil and do good. Search for peace and work to maintain it. The eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the Lord turns his face against those who do evil. Many years ago, I heard a story about Mark Twain and his bride. It seems the quite pious Mrs. Samuel Clemens was horrified by her husband's swearing. His language, according to legend, was sufficient to turn the air blue. It was said no flower would grow where he spat upon the ground. One day, the wife decided on a plan to end said profanity. She wrote a list of every kind of vile language she could remember dropping from her husband's lips. Armed with all the darkest of invectives, she marched into his study where Mr. Clemens was putting pen to paper and promptly began to screech at the top of her lungs every foul word or phrase on the list. When she was done, Samuel looked up at her, took a long draw from his pipe, snorted out the smoke, and replied, My dear, that language doesn't suit you. You have all the words, but you just can't sing the music. To be clear, I'm with Mrs. Clemens on this one. Foul language makes my soul cringe. Considering 21st century culture vocabulary remarkably devoid of any softness, I muse wistfully on what a joy it would be to lose one's sense of hearing. But more to the Apostle Peter's point, Scripture's very long list of do's and don'ts are rejected out of hand by contemporary culture with as much cavalier quickness as one would squash a flea. And those who do just that miss the mark by light years. Virtually every time you see a list of the seven deadly sins and the like, it's less prohibitive than descriptive of an attitude which is destructive to human souls. To simplify this, God is not shocked and horrified by your little lie, or your cuss word, or an extra helping of this or that. Rather, it's merely foolishness that diminishes who you could be if you took the opposite, healthier approach to life. Truth-telling, kind language, and maintaining self-control over appetites and carnal desires. Unraveling my little metaphorical tale of the Twains makes Mrs. Twain the inept crusader for good, attempting to force Mr. Twain to cease his foolish and harsh language. In the doing, she is viewed by her husband as a twit who needs to be stifled, and with his sarcasm, he shows that she was right about his attitude. And that's the whole issue about what God is doing with that big book of do's and don'ts by the dozens. For you today, if you're a reformer, you have diets and lists of do's and don'ts, new promises of self and God every day, let me encourage you to breathe more. Confession is good. Persevering in virtuous deeds is also good, and so is helping others see the light. But the main issue is still the main issue. God wants your love and relationship more than anything you do or don't do for Him. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.